Hi everyone, today we're going to continue learning about plants, but specifically we're going to start taking a look at the structures that we would find inside of a leaf. So inside of a typical leaf, what would we find in there? Uh, if you were to need any help or need me for any reason at all with questions or comments, uh, you'll find my email address there on the screen. If you haven't already, I want you to pause the video, gather your materials, you'll need your science notebook, a pencil, and some color pencils. Let's go ahead and get started. So let's take a look at our objectives today. Our objectives will be to explain what a cross-section cut of a leaf is. So if we look inside of a leaf, we're gonna to have to cut the leaf open. And I need you to understand what a cross-section cut is. The second thing that you'll need to be able to do is I need you to be able to look at a diagram that is unlabeled, that shows the parts of a leaf and be able to label it. So you need to understand what those structures inside of a leaf are. You will also need to be able to explain what the job or the function of each part inside of a leaf is. So similar to how we, when we looked at the flowers, you need to be able to name the structure and then be able to tell me what its job was or its purpose was. You'll need to be able to do that with the parts inside of a leaf. Uh, you'll also need to explain when plant stomata are typically open and when they are typically closed. And finally, you'll need to be able to explain why plants open and close their stomata. So those are some words that you do not know we'll get to it. All right, let's jump right in. So if we were to talk about cutting a leaf in cross section, it's important that you look at the diagram. Um, if we take a look at this leaf in cross section and we're looking inside of a leaf, a cross sectional cut is really just gonna be a, a cut. So if, we're, if we were looking at the blade of the leaf, we would try to be, we were to cut the blade, we would be looking to see what's inside. So if we were to cut this leaf along the mid rib, along that center vein, uh, then we could look down here in the bottom corner and we would be able to look and see some structures here inside the leaf. Now, the thing that I want you to know to begin with, uh, what we're looking at here mostly are cells. So most of the things that we can see here inside this cross section cut, this is from a microscope, these are plant cells. And we have several different sizes and shapes of cells here. And that's one of the things that we're gonna be learning about. Uh, as a reminder from what you learned in fifth grade, cells are just the basic building blocks of life. Cells they can carry out all of those seven life processes, and they are live. There's, uh, we can say that they're the smallest unit of life. So let's take a look and see what we find inside of a leaf. So inside of a leaf, here's a uh, leaf cross section. Remember, this is uh, looking at the blade of a leaf that's been cut from the edge on. And we got about seven different parts that I want us to pay attention to, and I'm going to start at the top. We're just going to first off name them. Okay, so if we look at this top very thin coating here, this top coating is something called the cuticle. Uh, now, if you were to think about, some of you may know that uh, the bottom of your nails, like your fingernails, are also called cuticles. Uh, this is called the cuticle. If we look at this, this square, flat, sort of rectangular cells underneath that. These are all cells. It's an entire layer of cells. But we call this the upper epidermis. And so if you think about your skin, some of you may remember from when you studied the human body that the upper layer of your skin is also called the epidermis as well. Now this is where things get slightly different. If we look at these long cells that are turned on end. Um, these cells are something called the mesophyll. Okay, so these are called the mesophyll cells. Now there are two different types of mesophyll cells. And we're not gonna learn what those two types are. We're just gonna recognize that this whole area in here is the mesophyll. Uh, the mesophyll turns out to be, I think, probably uh, some of the most important cells are the ones that, for what we're studying, we care the most about. Here we have, this is going to be that leaf vein where we've cut it in cross section. So that's that vein. So inside of here, we have both the xylem and the phloem, but we call this the vascular bundle. And then moving underneath there, here we have, here we have this, this lower set of cells. We call this the lower epidermis. So once again, uh, we just call this the epidermis. We have an upper and a lower. It's going to be a little strange, but I want to take a look at these three parts as well. So when this arrow here is pointing to a, an open area inside the leaf, we just call that an air chamber. So here we have an air chamber. And leading into that air chamber, here there's a little hole. That little hole, that little pore is called a, sto a stoma. Uh, the plural for that is stomata. So we can see that we have two stomata here. We have two holes that enter this leaf. And then on either side of that pore, we have guard cells. So we have a cuticle, an upper epidermis, mesophyll, 
the vascular bundle, the lower epidermis, an air chamber, stomata, and some guard cells. Let's take a look at what each one of these parts does. So this diagram looks a little different because I needed to save some space and you can see that there's just going to be numbers. So let's take a look at the job of each one of these part, plant parts. First part that we looked at was something called the cuticle. So the cuticle is a waxy coating that's on the outside of leaves. If you've ever looked at a leaf and thought, wow, that's really shiny and glossy, then what you're looking at is you're looking at a leaf that has a really probably thick and well-coated cuticle. The whole point of the cuticle is it helps plants save water. It's for protection. Some of you know that wax and the water don't mix and the wax keeps the water on the inside of the leaf and that's the job of the cuticle. Second thing we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at that first layer of cells starting at the top. We're gonna to look at this epidermis and we're gonna look at the upper one. Now I need you to know that the lower epidermis down here is gonna also have the same job. And this is really all about protection. Just like your skin protects your body, these epidermis cells on this plant leaf are also going to be protecting what's inside of this leaf. So these are protection cells, the epidermis, they're used for protection. Now let's get to these cells that I said were gonna be most important. This is another type of cell and it's, these are mesophyll cells. And I want you to know these are the, these are the food making cells. When we say that uh, plants are able to photosynthesize and they're able to make food inside of their leaves, well, this is where that happens at. Uh, these uh, little green dots you see here, they're those uh, things that we looked at uh, last week sometime called chloroplasts. And inside the chloroplast class, we have the chlorophyll. Remember that's the magic green chemical that allows photosynthesis to happen. And photosynthesis, photosynthesis does happen here inside these mesophyll cells. So those are food making cells. So the vascular bundle is something that we looked at earlier. Uh, the vascular bundle is just going to be uh, the tubes that transport food and water to everywhere, every cell in the plant. So if food is made here, food's gonna make its way into this vascular bundle and it's gonna go elsewhere to the plant. And then water from the roots is also going to enter the leaf here. Uh, remember, this is a vascular bundle is similar to our vascular system or our circulatory system. We already talked about this lower epidermis, which we said all those epidermis cells are used for protection of what's inside the leaf. Let's take a look at the, let's take a look at number six over here. Let's look at this gas, uh, this, this uh, air chamber. So we said this was an open space and it's, uh, inside of the leaf, we need some open space in between these mesophyll cells because it allows for something called gas exchange. Gas exchange is something that also happens in your lungs. And what I mean by that, you know that when you breathe in, you are, uh, you're breathing in air and you're removing some of that oxygen from the air, but you're also, when you exhale, when you breathe out, you're also breathing out air that has a little bit more carbon dioxide. So we essentially have exchanged some gases. Well, plants do the opposite of that. We know that for photosynthesis, they need the carbon dioxide. So they don't breathe in, but that the gases in the air diffuse into there, they move into there, and some of the carbon dioxide is absorbed, and some of the uh, oxygen that is the the waste product from photosynthesis is also able to uh, is also able to go into this air chamber and is able to exit. So let's go down and let's look at these last two bits. So our stomata is going to be uh, we're going to look at number eight here. That's our stomata. Remember that's that tiny opening or pore. Uh, it's very it's great to think of this like a little mouth on the bottom of a leaf. Uh, and actually, stoma means mouth. So these tiny openings allow things to enter and exit. Some things that you might have entering and exit these tiny pores and going inside of the leaf. Well, we talked about carbon dioxide and oxygen, those things that we need for photosynthesis, but we also, we talked about transpiration. So we know that uh, water is able to evaporate from the leaves. Well, when the water evaporates from the leaves, this is where it exits from this, these tiny pores or openings called stomatas. And controlling these stomatas, we have these two things here on either side that are called guard cells. Guard cells, um, essentially are like lips. They, they allow the plants, uh, they allow the leaves to be able to close these openings, to close these tiny openings called stomata, depending on what's going on around them in their environment. The guard cells and the stomata are definitely one way that plants can respond to their environment. So uh, here, that's, uh, that pretty much takes care of the bits and pieces we know, need to know inside of a leaf. And so let's take a look at, uh, let's take a look at a, a little bit more detail on the stoma and the stomata and the guard cells. So we've said that the, uh, that the stomata can be open and closed by the guard cells. And generally speaking on terrestrial plants or land plants, you're gonna always find that those 
those stomata, those openings are on the bottom of the leaves. Now, if, uh, for water plants, things that float in the water like lilies, we typically find those stomata on top of the leaves. But you may find that depending on this, the type of plant or the species of plant, some plants may have hundreds of these stomata on the bottom of the leaves, others may have thousands. Uh, you know, and so it's very particular to the type of plant. Uh, depends on how many of the stomata you find on the bottom of each leaf. And please remember, when, my, when I, if you hear me use the word stoma, that just means it's singular, meaning only one stomata, which is plural, meaning more than one. So if we if we were to look at an actual plant to a microscope, which unfortunately we're not able to do because uh, we don't have our microscopes, um, here's a good example that shows the bottom of a plant leaf looking through a microscope. And we can see that we have two we have two stomata here. We have one on the top left that is going to be closed. You can very clearly see that the guard cells that surround it um, have pinched that, that mouth, that stomata closed. And then if we look at the one in the bottom right, we can see that that one has been opened. So that gives us a good idea of what an open and a closed stomata look like. So why? Why do they open and close these things? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Well, when plants are going to open their stomata mostly during the day, they're going to open it during the day because during the day we have a lot of sunlight for photosynthesis. Uh, they need, when they're photosynthesizing, they need to be able to absorb carbon dioxide from the air. So they need air to be able to get in. So during the day, we're going to find, uh, during photosynthesis, we're going to find that the plants are able to absorb that carbon dioxide from photosynthesis through those open stomata. In addition, we know that uh, we said that transpiration is used for cooling of the plant. Well, it's going to be warmer during the day, so it's going to be important that that, that water can exit these stomata from transpiration uh, to cool the plant more efficiently. And of course, we have some oxygen gas that's going to be the waste product left over as the photosynthesis is happening. So during the day, it's important that these materials, these gases are exchanged and transpiration can happen. So, you know, if a closed stomata, this wouldn't be a very efficient, uh, would not be a very efficient system for plants to have. Now, on the other hand, when do they close them? Well, plants are going to close their stomata at night. Uh, at night, of course, no sunlight, which means very little photosynthesis, not many opportunities for them to make food. But when they do this, uh, closing them at night does prevent the plant from losing so much water. You know, water is necessary for survival plants. They can't move around to get it. So it is an, it's really important for them. It's imperative that they be able to preserve or conserve the water that they do have. So at, during the day, the stomata are open. Stomata are open. This allows for photosynthesis, allows those materials to enter. Uh, and at night, we're going to find that uh, those stomata are generally going to be closed. And that's so that they can save water. So that transpiration, uh, though it will still happen a little bit, happens very, very, very slowly. Uh, this is a great example of another way that plants respond to their environment. So remember, the guard cells closing stomata. This is all about saving water. Uh, open stomata are going to allow photosynthesis, CO2 for photosynthesis to come in. It's going to allow uh, oxygen gas left over from photosynthesis to exit, uh, H2O for cooling to exit. Uh, and then the closed stomata at night, well, of course, that's going to be uh, about conserving water. All right, you're going to need to pause your video. And this is going to be a little difficult. You're going to need to take your time, but I need you to make this cross sectional drawing that's shown here. Simply do your best. But I want you to make this cross-sectional drawing, add some color, and then I need you to put down the name and the job, use the numbering system that I've shown you here, of each one of these structures inside of a leaf. Uh, once you've done that, feel free to unpause the video. This is going to take some time. Do not rush through it. You will need this drawing for your quiz next week. All right, so here's our Just for Fun lab today. And we're going we're gonna to look at transpiration, and we're going to do that with... We're going to do that with a bag. So this, I want to tell you up front, this works best on a sunny day, even though it will work on a day that's cloudy. The only things you're going to need is you're going to need a big zip, a gallon Ziploc baggie, and you might want to also have about 12 inches of string or yarn. Now, if you don't have a Ziploc bag, if you've got another, another plastic bag that maybe you brought produce home from the supermarket in, that will work great too. Um, any kind of clear plastic bag, though, works best. After we have gathered some string in a plastic bag, we need to go find a tree that we can reach some lower branches on. Preferably, those branches are in direct sunlight. And we want to find the tree that we can that has the largest leaves in, uh, on it. So after that, we're going to go ahead and place the, uh, the limb and the leaves inside of the plastic bag. 
Uh, and then we want to seal the bag as tightly as possible. Mostly, you're going to want to put the end of the, the end of the, the limb in there with the leaves and use the yarn to very tightly tie it around the branch back in behind uh, where the, uh, the plastic bag and the leaves are. So, so we're going to do this. Time to wait. So we're going to wait about 30 minutes. Take your notebook. Go make some observations. Uh, I want you to notice what's happening in the bag. Uh, go ahead and speculate. Why is this happening? Uh, if you can, go ahead and wait another hour. See what's changed in the bag. If you can wait two hours, that would be great. You're going to notice, you're definitely going to notice a trend. You're going to be able to see the change pretty easily. Just to make sure you understand what we're looking for here, all we need to do is we just need a plastic bag and we're going to wrap it around the, we're going to put the leaves inside of there. We're going to wrap it around the, uh, the limb. And then we need to somehow either tie it and a string works best, but we, we want to make this, we want to seal this back here as best we can. Guys, that should do it for now. So until next time, stay curious.